Hello again. So we're just going to launch right into this part of the lecture. We're going to be talking about what, what is art. So the arts include music, theater, dance, literature, the visual arts. So underneath the visual arts is kind of an umbrella term. So under that is drawing, painting, sculpture, film, architecture, and design. And that's mostly what we're going to be talking about in this class are the visual arts. We're not really talking about any of the other ones. And it basically art helps to communicate feelings or meaning beyond a verbal exchange. So it's basically a work of art, let's go on, is a visual expression of an idea or experience formed with skill through the use of a medium. And then we'll talk about what a medium is. It's a particular material along with the accompanying technique uh, the plural is media, and artists select media to suit the function of the work, as well as the ideas they wish to present. So a medium is basically whatever the artwork is made of. So if I have a piece of paper with Sharpie on it, the media is Sharpie and paper, right? So if I did a doodle, if you use paint on canvas, oil paint or acrylic, it depends on what type of paint, you know, you actually would list that as your media, acrylic paint on canvas. And her, kind of circling back around to the piece we looked at previous, Her Secret is Patience by Janet Eichelman, her media was that netting material, the lighting, um, and she sought to create a work that would say something about the Phoenix, Air, Arizona area in a way that harmonized with nature. So it makes sense that the medium she chose was that flexible netting because it would move in the wind and similarly, she, so, she chose a size, scale, shape, and color to work what would, with what would best express her message, which, which was kind of a, a tribute to nature, a tribute to the saguaro cactus that blooms at night. So the fact that she chose lighting at night to symbolize the fact that the cactus blooms at night, all of her media ties into the meaning of the piece. So artists really, the tech and the techniques that they use and the media that they use really do help to kind of back up a piece. And, and a lot of times an artist will select a media based on the message that they're trying to get across, basically, and the techniques that they're wanting to use. And that's basically what I just said. So the medium is chosen by an artist to enforce the function of the work. Um, mixed media describes an artwork that was used, um, that uses a combination of materials. So her piece definitely is a combination of materials with the flexible netting and the lighting elements, such as the, I think she probably used fiber light, um, fiber optic um, cable to create the lighting. So what is creativity? Creativity is the ability to bring forth something new that has value. And creativity is an important skill. It's highly desirable in many different areas of our lives. But in this class, we're mostly talking about artistic creativity. And it has the potential to influence thought or future action. So we'll talk about, we talked about that already, but here we go. Here's, here's a piece that's actually fairly creative, I think. The artist is Robin Rode. He drew a basketball hoop on the asphalt and then kind of photographed himself lying down in different positions as if he's kind of flipping through the air, performing this impossible slam dunk. And it really does kind of harken back to like stop motion photography, slow motion photography. It's definitely referenced here. So the artist is using chalk and drawing with that, which kind of goes along with the fact that he's on a street. Plus he's kind of dressed like an early LL Cool J. And overall, this piece is a really harmonious celebration of street culture. So urban culture, street culture is really being kind of, that message is really being shown here because he is using the basketball court or the asphalt. And, and the subject is him with a basketball and a basketball hoop, which is very much an urban um, theme. And it's a creative way of, of putting a piece together, really, I never would have thought of something like this. I mean, he starts off down here, he comes up, he starts to flip around, and he's flipped quite a few times, and then he finally makes the basket here. 
And it's kind of a playful, fun piece, really. And quite creative. So we have trained and untrained artists. There's two different types. And everybody has the potential to be creative. And training is helpful in a lot of ways, but not necessary, because a lot of people are creative. And the urge to create is really a universal a universal feeling amongst humans. So trained artists are a little different because they receive training, some sort of instruction in the field of art, while untrained artists have not received any instructive instruction, but they create anyway. So folk artists and outsider artists are, con are considered tr untrained artists. So we're gonna actually talk about the untrained artists because they're not as well known. So we're gonna start off with the outsider artist. Uh, one of the most famous ones out there, we don't really know his name, but they nicknamed him the Philadelphia Wireman. And he has really become extremely important in the field of outsider art. And I did actually end up throwing in a couple more examples of his works after this slide, because really they are better as a set instead of just looking at one at a time. And that's just as well because there's literally thousands of these sculptures. And they're really quite obsessive. They're disciplined in design. A wire firmly binds a collage of found objects, including plastic glass, food packaging, umbrella parts, tapes, eyeglasses, tools, jewelry, you know, foil, coins, nails, whatever you can find on the street, basically. And it's quite ironic that they're made out of trash because they were also discovered in the trash of a run, rundown Philadelphia neighborhood in the 1970s. And like I said, they found th like thousands of these, at, at least, a, I think maybe 1,200 or something, at least 1,000. And it, it's thought that the person that made this was a man because the gauge of this, some of the wire is quite thick and it would have taken a lot of strength to bend the wire, but no one really knows who made these pieces. Another thing about it is they are quite masculine. If you look at them, they're not a very feminine piece of work really. And no one really knows exactly what they mean. Some critiques compare these sculptures to classical antiquity sculptures, but really they, they try to dissect them and they really can't figure out exactly what they mean because we don't know the artist and he's not here to tell us what they mean. One thing is for certain though, they are considered a really important discovery in the field of outsider art. So we'll take a look at the next slide. So here's some more of the same pieces from the Philadelphia Wireman that they found in the trash. And you can see there's a, I think this is a straw. Um, I, I'm not quite sure. This looks like a piece of paper. So it's basically trash that's kind of bundled up in these interesting and then mounted on these pedestals. So maybe just ask yourself, what do you think these sculptures mean? You know, take a little time and see if you can come up with any ideas. And I'll just kind of launch right into it because we're not actually in class. So to me, I kind of think that they maybe you're kind of sad. It seems like this person had a lot of time on their hands and they were collecting people's trash and bundling it up, presenting it in this really formal way, almost trying to make trash into treasure. And they're holding this trash dearly in, in a way where other people are just throwing it out. So this person is obviously potentially a fairly sensitive individual and the artist really did take the time to put these pieces together and wrap them up carefully. And it also kind of makes me think that maybe this person might've been a hoarder. Basically, like I said before, the artist is really turning others' trash into treasure. And the sheer quantity of the sculptures is almost like a form of hoarding as well. And the fact that they're made out of trash. And I think these sculptures are almost better because we don't know who made them and we don't know what they mean uh, because it leaves it open to interpretation which is a big stark contrast to the previous piece that we looked at, Janet Eichelman's Her Secret is Patience, because her, her art was actually better once we learned about its meaning, whereas these trash sculptures are almost better shrouded in mystery, because then we can take our, use our own imagination and kind of imagine what they might mean and who made them. And so it kind of depends on the piece, really. But this is, these are a little different because we don't know who made them. We don't know what they mean. And it's actually a little bit better that way. 
So moving on to another type of untrained artist is a folk artist. So like outsider artists, folk artists have little training. They differ from outsider artists in that their art is an established um, tradition. So they work in a style theme um, of tradition and craftsmanship that has a long lineage behind it. And they don't necessarily have formal training, but their work usually shows enthusiasm and, to, and devotion to tradition. So it, there's a quite a few different types of folk art, uh, quilting, hand embroideries, furniture making, customizing cars, sometimes sculptures, anything made by regular people with little training that is done in some sort of traditional way. So tradition is really the difference here. So here's a piece, a uh, quilt by Mary Wallace. It's called Peony. It's uh, quilted cotton. And quilting has really been a flourishing form of folk art in the US. It's practiced by women typically, typically multiple women working together on one piece. This particular quilt is made from fabric, fabric overlays that the artist stitched down, and that's called applique. And it shows an influence from Pennsylvania German pottery, so that's kind of where the tradition comes in. And the peonies have a design that has been kind of abstracted, so these red peony designs have been abstracted into six-point stars 